All right. Hello and welcome back. So we are going to start off with uh, Green's functions with inhomogeneous boundary condition stuff. So what has happened is we learned in this last lecture how to deal with, um, I mean, how to deal with, I mean, inhomogeneous uh, differential equations, by which I mean we could have an arbitrary forcing function and we should we would be able to solve that with, uh, you know with these Green's function methods. Um, but you would have noticed that our construction to this force problem uh, relied on the Green's function obeying homogeneous boundary conditions. This is because if you look at the equation, uh, if you look at the solution, why? of x as this integral a to b of the Green's function, f of psi del psi. This represents sort of continuous superposition of solutions for individual values of psi. So in order to treat the problem with inhomogeneous boundary conditions, we'll have to, we'll have we have to tweak our ways a little bit. So uh, the strategy is going to be the following. So first, what we were going to do is we're going to find any solution to the homogeneous. Uh, so find um, any solution to the homogeneous equation, any, uh, okay, let's, let's say, uh, any solution, any particular solution to the homogeneous equation, yp of x to the homogeneous equation. L of y is equal to zero, obeying inhomogeneous boundary conditions. Boundary conditions. Usually, uh, this is easy as we are interested in a simple, uh, I mean, simple solution and not the most sort of, I mean, general solution that you can get. Now, since the differential operator is linear, uh, the general solution uh, to the one that obeys, so this, uh, so differential operator is differential operator, L is linear. So the general solution, general solution to uh, L of Y is equal to F now obeying, uh, obeying in homogeneous boundary conditions is simply the following is simply Y of X is equal to y p of x plus integral a to b g of x psi f of psi this. Where the term involving the Green's function ensures that L of y indeed equals to the forcing term, but this does not disturb the <laughs> boundary values, which are, are uh, I mean, it's something that, that you get from y of p, okay? So let's do an example now. Let's do an example of this. So uh, now let's just go back to what we were doing. So we were looking at minus y double prime, for example. y double prime minus y prime is equal to f of x. Uh, with now boundary conditions are going to be y at zero is equal to zero. 
but y at one is not equal to zero, this is one. Okay, so this is the important one. Okay. So we already have the Green's function that uh, corresponds to the homogeneous problem. So all we need to do is we need to find a solution to the homogeneous equation with this changed boundary condition. So the homogeneous equation is y double prime minus y prime is equal to zero. And uh, so find solution to this with changed boundary condition. Now, what is that? So the uh, general solution is simply y is equal to c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. Now the boundary conditions, what do those imply? So y of zero is equal to zero essentially means, so uh, c1 is equal to zero. So boundary conditions imply what? Boundary conditions imply c1 is equal to zero and c2 is one over sine of one, okay? This looks weird, but so the uh, solution, the particular solution that you're going to get is sine x by sine one, okay? So this is the one that obeys the boundary condition. And then you just add the stuff that you had before. So y, uh, of x is now equal to sine x by sine one plus old solution. And the old, old solution, if you would uh, remember from the previous lecture, was uh, given by this, this equation. Right, so you add this with the sine x Sorry, not here. Um, add this and this, and you get the solution now for uh, the Green's function with the inhomogeneous boundary condition. Very good. Okay, now what we want to do today uh, is we want to move on to the eigenfunction uh, expansion. So connecting. Uh, this looks horrible. Connecting to eigenfunction expansion. So here we go. Now, um, so for self-adjoint operators, we now have two distinct, well, not distinct, two different expressions for the Green's function with, um, with homogeneous, homogeneous boundary conditions. So let's list them down to two different solutions. So one of them is g of x. Xi is the thing that we just said. So this was alpha xi, w xi. This is theta of xi minus x, y1 of x, y2 xi plus theta of x minus xi, and we're out of space. It's usual jugglery. Y2 of x, y1 of xi. And uh, we have also a thing from the from earlier. This is g of x psi is given by this ion function expansion, n equal to one to infinity, one over lambda n, y n n x, y star 
N. Z. Right, y, where yn and lambda n are the eigenfunctions of, and the eigenvalues of uh, the, uh, I mean, some, some deal with operator. Now, um, number, this particular thing does not have any sort of delta function in it, but we can always use the fact that you have delta x minus psi, this is omega x summation n equal to one to infinity, y n x, y star n psi. Okay. So how do we do that? I mean, um, let's just, uh, say this a little more clearly. So when you have a when you have a delta function, this can be expanded in a basis of orthogonal functions. Okay. Um, for integer n, so uh, y n is a complete set of eigenfunctions of a strom lubil operator in this uh, particular domain. Let's call call this uh, a b and the weight, weight function is, uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's take some other color. So, so you can always write down uh, delta of x minus xi as some, uh, you know, some over all, all, all integers, c n, y n, x, right? Now c n, is what cn is integral a to b y n star x delta of x minus psi omega of x dx. So this is simply y n star psi omega of psi, right? So, now remember, um, fx into delta x is equal to f of zero into delta x. Therefore, omega of psi, delta of x minus psi, this is just simply again, omega of x, uh, x minus psi, right? So that's something that, that you can write down. So hence, um, what one can do, this is, uh, this is a weird, weird identity to write down, but this is true non nonetheless omega x by omega of psi into delta of x minus. So it's just, you need to keep in mind that the, I mean, delta functions make everything all right. So you can write delta of x minus psi as the following. S will be equal to um, Cn, remember what Cn is. So Cn, so this is summation n C n y n. So this is summation n y n star xi omega xi into y n of x. And by the same identity, by what we have here, we can also relabel this as omega x times summation n y n star psi y n x. Okay. So this is this is uh, how I got this. Now viewing uh, 
xi as a parameter, we can write this uh, an eigenfunction expansion of the Green's function as the following as well. So let's say that we write down g of x psi, we call this summation in integers, g and hat psi y and x. So what is gonna happen is that lambda, g, I mean, L acting on G is going to be what L um, summation N belonging to Z, G hat N xi L of Y N X. Now Y N X is very simple. Y N X is what we had had all the way through. So omega X goes out. So N belongs to uh, so G N hat, Xi lambda N Y N X. Now for this to agree with, uh, um, to agree with L of G is equal to Delta of X minus Xi. So we will need if this, if these these two things have to agree, if this and this have to agree, then what what we need is the following, right? What we need is let's just get these two together. So this means g hat and psi has to be y n star psi by lambda n. Now we can, I mean, we can actually obtain this if we just multiply both sides of uh, this by the following. So, so we can uh, remember what what we what we got. So let's 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 see. Um, let's say that this is. Uh, So let's start off with, with this and this equation actually, let's start off with this equation, um, omega x. So uh, let's say omega of x uh, summation in g n tilde psi lambda n y n x let's say you is equal to delta x minus psi so let's multiply both sides by y n and integrate uh, integrate this and uh, if we do that then we are going to simply end up with the relationship of g of x y but let's let's just try to ensure that that we do that so uh, so what do you do uh, you multiply so multiply both sides with oh, y and star OM star X, okay? So you have N belonging to C um, and there is, sorry, there is an G N hat Xi lambda N and there is an integral of y m star x y n x omega x dx. You have to integrate this from 
A to B. So you do that. Yeah, so this was the left inside, so the right inside is integral a to b y m star x delta x minus i to x. If you do this, what happens is that you get a delta m n here. So this is delta m n. So that is simply, so what you're going to get is you're going to get uh, this, uh, you know, you're just, just going to get the M out here and that's, that is all. So you have to remember that Y, Y with Y is equal to, uh, yeah, so this is only non-zero if you have um, m is equal to n. So remember the following thing that y n with y m omega is delta m n. So this essentially is going to mean that g hat n psi Let's call this M actually. G hat M psi lambda M is equal to here, then the delta function just pulls this out. Uh, psi of, uh, y of y M of psi. So G hat M of psi is Y M star psi pi lambda M. Now you can put this g hat m back here now. So if you put g hat m back here, so g of x psi, then just becomes uh, summation n belongs n. So that's g hat m. So that's y m star of xi divided by lambda n into y n of x. So you would remember that this is exactly the expression we started off with. Uh, so this is exactly the expression we started off with. So you can see that this is, uh, I mean, so these two ways of trying to get at the Green's function are essentially one and the same. Okay, so that's nice. Um, and uh, so now uh, what we need to emphasize is that, uh, so these two, uh, these, these two expressions are actually one and the same, right? So that's what we have, uh, we have, we have essentially proved. Now, um, so the, all the eigenvalues of lambda n must actually be non-zero. Um, if the sum of the eigenvalues is zero, this leads to a non-invertibility of the operator L. Uh, since the Green's function is a unique solution to the, the problem of, uh, yeah, you know, lambda g uh, l g is equal to delta of x minus psi and that obeys this boundary condition of a uh, g of a psi equal to g of p psi equal to zero. These two things have to be one and the same, okay? So that's, that's, uh, that's nice. Now, um, Again, so we will, we will be doing some, some uh, little bit of symmetrization uh, to make our lives a little simple. So just stick with me for a little bit. So remember that um, A of, sorry, lambda xi 
uh, omega psi is a constant. So ddx of lambda omega is equal to alpha prime omega plus alpha omega prime is equal to beta of y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime plus alpha into y1 y1 y2 double prime sorry minus y2 y1 double primed. Uh, here you need to remember that L is alpha x del x squared plus beta x del x plus gamma x and beta x, so beta x is equal to del x of alpha x, as we have seen earlier. So keeping that in mind. So what you have is that ddx of alpha omega, uh, alpha w or alpha omega, if you wish, is y1 l y2 minus y2 l y1. This is funny, right? So, so, so what we are doing is we are trying to show that this is actually, we are trying to show that this is actually, uh, I mean, actually a, a, a constant. So, um, I mean, obviously at uh, xi equal to, I mean, x equal to xi, this is true, but, you know, at some arbitrary uh, point x, this might, might not be true, but what we see is the following. What we see is so so you you can rearrange this so you know we've just done a ddx on this so now you can rearrange this guy and get it to a form like this this is obviously e equal to zero right so this is obviously equal to zero thus alpha x omega x is independent of where, where we evaluate it. So in particular, what we will do is we will call g of psi one of a constant uh, theta of psi minus x, y1 x, y2 psi, uh, plus theta of x minus y psi, um, y2 x, y1 psi, so that essentially means g of x psi is equal to g of psi x. This is nice. Uh, this is a nice property. Uh, this is something that we can keep in mind. Okay. Just a quick word of why this is equal to zero if in case some of you are thinking about it, this is equal to f of y, y2, right? So this, so remember the equation that we started off with. So the equation that we started off with is L of y is equal to f. So L of L of, so this, this particular equation so the homogeneous equation of L of y 
uh, this this is this has to be equal to zero. So yeah, so the point essentially is that this this guy here uh, is uh, so on, on the omega of x is a uh, constant at the end of the day. Yeah, one second, just trying to reconfirm. I just said something a little weird wrong. So let me just uh, correct that. So remember that y1 and y2 are essentially solutions of the equation L of y is equal to zero. So it, that essentially means that these, these guys are individually going to be equal to zero and hence this equation is zero, okay? So yeah, let's keep that in mind. I'm sorry about the F term that I wrote down. But anyway, so that's that. And, um, So, so again, let's just quickly, uh, I mean, you know, again, go back to our favorite example of um, this equation that we have been looking at all along. L y is equal to minus y double prime minus y on zero one with boundary conditions y at zero is equal to y at one is equal to zero. So the normalized eigenfunctions corresponding to the eigenvalues are the following. So yn of x are given by root two sine of n pi x, where lambda n is given by n squared by squared minus one. So the Green's function g of x psi is twice summation n equal to one to infinity sine of n by x sine of n n by psi divided by n squared by squared minus one. And the other one is g of x psi. This was given by one over sine one divided into theta of x minus psi, sine of one minus x, sine psi plus theta of psi minus x, sine x sine of one minus psi. Okay. Now what you can do is by using trigonometric identities, you can write down, write this down as x psi is equal to theta of x minus psi cos of x sine of psi plus theta of psi minus x sine x cos psi minus cot one sine x signs. I, I leave this as an exercise for you guys to check. Now view x as an independent variable and psi as a parameter. So we will expand this function in a, in a Fourier series. So this whole thing we will uh, expand in a Fourier series as uh, summation n equal to one to infinity g n x sine of n pi x, okay? So the Fourier coefficients, g n, g n x are given by twice integral of zero to one sine of n pi x into theta of x minus psi cos x 
sine xi plus the rest of the terms theta of xi minus x sine x cos xi minus cot one sine x sine xi is going to be a dx on this. So you want to calculate this, and of course, uh, since I'm doing this, doing doing all of this, it should not be a surprise to you that this actually yields So this I would like to do, uh, like you to do as homework. Check these steps, check the steps. Okay. So that would be, uh, you know, homework, if you will. And uh, yeah, so that is all I wanted to do for the day. So next time around, I'm going to give you a little uh, bit of an application to initial value problems before we go on to something called the Riemann, Riemann method. And uh, that may be actually a short class. And then we will move on to Green's functions for PDEs. Hopefully we can wrap this up in another three lectures. And then, uh, yeah, so that would be that. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And um, I hope to get back to you guys soon.